Times Rahul Mishra Like any designer it's just about the the philosophy what is behind the brand when i travel anywhere i or any incident anything that inspired me then i come back share that inspiration with my team it becomes a common inspiration for all of us it's a very important like uh, you know to understand what we want to do why we want to do mm-hmm. it the why is very strong fashion also allows you to express yourself rahul mishra is the next karl lagerfeld how much do you actually believe in it a lot of journalists they they get like very emotional about somebody's work and they write something like that in future nobody knows where right. it takes you so it is a it is a wonderful thing to have even uh, that feeling dil ko khush karne ke khayal hi kafi hai to i don't have it it's like that Hi. Welcome to Mina Fashion and we're in conversation with the most renowned fashion designer Rahul Mishra. Hi sir, how are you? Hi, uh, very good, very good. Wonderful to see you. Thank you. Okay, so so what defines Rahul Mishra? I would say uh, like any designer it's just about the the philosophy what is behind the brand because ultimate thing about clothing is you know this world has enough of clothes. Okay. this world has just too many things which exist mm-hmm. so for us uh, what is really important is the purpose why we make something what we make okay and the purpose follows the process and the process what creates participation and that's how we create a product okay that's what we all see all okay. around us from our brand mm-hmm. but there has to be a part of you that is there in every product of yours right something that keeps you related to like rahul mishra and the label rahul mishra what is the similarity between them i think it's it's a it's a basic approach for life uh, it's uh, you know looking at simpler details mm-hmm. uh, which we see around often go unnoticed we look at the most humble shape of a leaf or maybe a flower and and it's just about like uh, sometimes taking those details putting on the clothing and and sometimes we also get surprised that oh my god this uh, this flower or maybe a simple ganda phool looks so beautiful we never thought like that okay because it's so much around us in abundance that mm-hmm. we often do not value it so in that way uh, you know clothing happen to be very very intimate part what we make the way we express it and in a in a very very personal journey if i say it's all about my my personal experiences and inspirations when i travel anywhere i or any incident anything that inspire me then i come back share that inspiration with my team it becomes a common inspiration for all of us okay and that is what goes on what we make so how did you take that journey up if it wasn't considered as a sort of a profession then from kanpur to here how did you take it i remember i was um, i wanted to be an artist always like because i'm very lazy i never wanted to work in my life <laughs> and i read so lazy read some quotes some time back uh, like in my childhood only mm-hmm. uh, if you make a hobby profession there is no single work in your life and i thought nothing can be better than this Uh-huh. I love sketching I love like making something you know it's going to be a really peaceful life after mm. that and we look at a engineer's life or a mba's life how mm. feeling oh my god will I able to handle it in my life because there's so much of geniusness which is required to qualify the exam then after the all your life you have to you know keep working you're chasing money mm-hmm. uh so my father was always against it so I had to run away from my home You ran away. Yeah, for for almost like one year, my father never spoke to me. I came to live with my sister. She was living in Delhi at the point in time in 2002. Then I prepared for NIFT and NID. Then okay. 2003, I got through NID in the bar. And there also, I was studying design, not fashion, okay. as per se. So while I was studying, um, you know, one fine day there was a there's an opening for Gen Next. fashion show at lakme fashion week mm-hmm. 2006 while i was studying in my classroom project half the clothes i made myself then took help of one tailor mm-hmm. presented one show and during that time also one scholarship to study first time fashion at uh, milan institute of marangoni mm-hmm. when they do study uh, fashion and then 2009 came back and started my brand again So that's a journey has been this has been almost a good 10 years. Yes. 
and um, all grateful and wonderful to everything which has happened right okay i've spoken to a lot of designers they say fashion is not easy the glim glam is just from the outside hmm. so it's it's a little tough it's a business along with a profession have you ever seen a dipping point where you feel now either i go absolutely in or i just pull out i don't think so that has ever ever happened to us because for us it's a very, very important like uh, you know to understand what we want to do why we want to do mm-hmm. it the why is very strong we are not doing it just for money mm-hmm. just for money i would have done anything else in life and would have made lot more money than what i'm making right now mm-hmm. but fashion also allows you to express yourself uh, the clothes allow you to create certain designs and design addresses so many problems which are with society with sustainability with uh, with environment mm-hmm. so in that way when you think about design as a problem solving exercise i think my entire bridging fashion design everything comes together like a like a like a beautiful job and okay. and who doesn't like puzzles in life so you know it's it's almost like more exercise mm-hmm. which uh, which you give to your brain every day you are solving problems which is such a such a wonderful thing mm-hmm. and when you're solving problems every day and you enjoy doing so i think it becomes a great profession i'm very very thankful that i'm i'm into you know business of design and fashion so do you consider it as a profession or actually as a business i think it's a it's a very very uh, well growing business for us also okay. at the same time uh, we get like you know very very honestly if i tell you like there's the only only business which give any chance for us to be a global brand okay today to be able to showcase with global power houses mm-hmm. so nevertheless we should be also thankful to fashion industry because fashion is very democratic okay this is where in the smallest portion of money alone if you believe in your idea if you want to create something with the smallest possible investment if you have talent you can make it big in life mm-hmm. and industry is very supportive to new talent so okay you studied both in india and outside in there right what is aesthetics what sort of a technical knowledge do you inculcate both in your garments i think both the colleges has been very very different and id was more of a design related school where okay. designer problem solving exercise the classic case mm. where you do not just design a garment like a product you think about a system design you think about you know when you design the product what is going to do for society for employability of people for craft mm. for climate for environment for culture everything okay so you're not just designing one simple garment mm-hmm. there are the lot more which goes into making a garment on the other hand in milan it was living at via montanopoliano where the, all the top brands have got biggest of their stores is one of the most beautiful fashion street uh, in milan mm-hmm. or one of the most expensive streets in the world living over there be seeing fashion up close uh, and understanding what goes in fashion what goes into making a brand what goes in actually you know running fashion as a business side of fashion oh okay yes and an idea was very very clear about design side of fashion mm-hmm. the sociological approach of fashion and uh, where milan was more for fashion and business side of fashion mm. so it was very 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 diverse and very very good that i'm very lucky that i could study at two very different ideologies Aspects, yes. of of uh, fashion education and i guess the both very important to run a brand very very important right? yes extremely and that is what makes us very very unique also as a right. brand okay so hearing from india what made you go international um what was that one moment you felt okay now i have the chance i should go international you know again i say when i started in 2009 back after gen x mm-hmm. um when i came back started my my business from bombay then probably you know at the per time uh, first 5 years in the business we had enough experience of doing multiple fashion shows in india yeah. that gives us enough know how about multiple times you are you are restarting making a new collection again making it again making it there was there was a lot of fashion critics also at that point in time they would criticize the collection they would appreciate and all that that somehow shaped our philosophy okay 
And then after that, in 2014, Bulma Prize has happened, uh, oh. International Bulma Prize. So I became first Indian to win it in 2014. And that was almost like five years of the brand. Mm -hmm. And after winning Bulma Prize, then Paris Fashion Week uh, inclusion happened. That was the biggest for me at the point of time. Okay. So that's how I think brand went international and we started showcasing on official calendar of Paris mm -hmm. Fashion Week. And all that happened. Rahul Mishra is the next Karl Lagerfeld. How much do you actually believe in it? And if I mean, what is it that people see and they feel that you know? Yes, he is the next Karl Lagerfeld. Then I don't know. Like <laughs> often, like often, like a lot of journalists, they they get like very emotional about somebody's work and yeah. they write something like that. <laughs> it puts a lot of pressure onto onto me, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but it makes us excited also. The future nobody knows where right. it takes you mm -hmm. and if the hope for future is making hopeful and excited mm -hmm. it's a great present for the for your present okay so it is a it is a wonderful thing to have even uh, that feeling what they say there and they're like uh, dil ko khush karne ke khayali kaafi hai, why don't have it? <laughs> <It's like that>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, tell me one thing. Um, what is the difference between the fashion industry in India and the fashion industry outside India? Uh, obviously, like uh, outside India is like obviously you are talking about 180 more countries put together that forms that form big in a fashion industry and the business side of fashion volume of mm -hmm. of fashion is really massive. Mm -hmm. You look at the budgets just for the show. Sometimes it crosses for one show. Biggest of turnovers what 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 Indian fashion brands have today. Okay. So obviously size of scale of fashion is really way big mm -hmm. and nevertheless one more thing is there one has to understand like in India the major business is also driven by uh, by wedding industry yes. which is really crucial and really important mm -hmm. and quite powerful it is even 1% of people of India are having a big budget for their weddings that makes into a huge population just one person yes. Indians. so in that way that is a very very big market which even European players are so eyeing right now mm -hmm. on other hand internationally also weddings are really big mm -hmm. nevertheless you have a lot of these brands like Elisa and all uh, you know self-sustaining brands without any foreign investment but they are making a big deal about it mm -hmm. And then second brands which are doing really big are like people who do really big fashion shows but they are either selling accessories or big makeup ranges, super expensive makeup, uh, perfume, fragrances, eyewear and all that. So in that way when you look at like luxury business in Europe is rather more organized, a bit more design driven okay, mm, or designer driven I must say. On other hand, India still has to like cover a lot more distance. Okay, and what do you have to say about Bollywood influence in India and the Indian fashion industry? Uh, I'll say in one way, if I must say, like Hollywood also has been influencing a lot uh, okay. global fashion, but mm -hmm. at the same time, there's a there's a strength which which European brands also are really powerhouse. Okay. So in that way, it becomes a very, very, very good marriage of like equals, I would say. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in India, when you look at like every second show using a showstopper, uh, I think when you look at Bollywood, it's probably rather more in, in public eye than actually fashion. So in that way, I think Bollywood kind of overshadows fashion. So in in our country, mm -hmm. fashion somehow starts with Bollywood and finishes with, with yes, Bollywood. I agree. This is this is a big problem. Yeah. So when I see that problem happening, I do not see how fashion is going to sustain or survive on its own. And is it actually strengthening the fashion industry? That is the question which I always often mm -hmm. I ask to myself. I still do not have an answer. Is is Bollywood? is giving strength to fashion industry or, or it's always going to be there to overshadow it mm. and all that because when people give a lot of examples of like collaboration of Javon Shea with Audrey Hepburn, mm -hmm. think about that one actor wearing one designer in a very very loyal way mm. and that is a collaboration uh, Javon Shea is making every time something special for her mm. 
she is reserving all her special appearances for Jivanshi. So that was a great collaboration. Right. I do not see something like that happening in India, even with a lot of wonderful actors. Mm-hmm. It's a golden time for Indian fashion, and great, and I think best time for for the Indian film industry also. Right. But I do not see that collaboration happening. I have seen like actors wearing probably every designer every second day. Right, right. So when you think about the power of Bollywood collaborating with a single fashion brand mm. or brand they believe in, mm. I think that is where the philosophy is, the belief in certain brand uh, should be re-looked at, should be seen very, very carefully. Three effective habits that a fashion designer must have to become successful. Sleeping on time and do not go out very often and do not party much. So that's going to be that's why I'm sleeping. Really? <laughs> Sketch a lot. That helps. Would you rather ride a vintage car or a modern design oriented one on your very big day? I think vintage car. A must visit country for every fashion designer. I think I have two here. You know? Okay. One is uh, Maldives. Okay. And. Uh, I think Santorini. 